Hello, my name is James Gibson, and welcome to my third Visual Basic tutorial in which we are going to be continuing to create a, a basic calculator using Visual Basic. Uh, so we're going to jump right on in here. Now, last time on the last tutorial that I did, uh, we started setting up what uh, we started setting up a number of variables, as you can see here, uh, which are designed to store our uh, various values as they get entered into our calculator. So the first uh, variable, which we see named here, is going to end up storing the first value that gets entered into our calculator as it goes. So uh, if we're following our 5 times 4 equals 20 example, it will end up holding on to the 5 when it gets typed in. The second number is going to hold on to our second value, which is going to be 4 in this case. Our uh, final value is going to actually only be used right at the end of our program, and that's going to end up storing the 20. Uh, and lastly, we're going to have this operation variable, which is going to hold a number based on whatever mathematical uh, operation we're doing. In this case, we're multiplying. So in our example here, uh, it would end up getting storing the value of 1. And uh, uh, our equals button, when it finally goes off, is going to take a look at this and decide how it's going to actually do the calculation. So we'll come back to that. So today, uh, we're going to go back to our design for just a moment. Uh, and what we're going to do is start working on these number buttons right here. So for today, I'm going to actually show you just how to do three of these buttons. And that's going to be the button number one here, uh, as well as the decimal button and the negative sign button. Uh, because these are the three, one, uh, the three that you're going to need to know the most about. Uh, but when we do number button number one, its code is actually going to be exactly this. All the other buttons are going to be exactly the same um, as that one uh, up until we reach des the decimal, in which case we have to do a little bit of special stuff as well as with the negative sign. So let's get started. We're going to jump right into one. Uh, now, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go to my design, as you can see up here, and I'm going to double click on the one. And this is going to take us to the subroutine, which is going to control when, uh, what happens when number one gets pressed. So we're going to jump in here. And here we have uh, private sub button one underscore click uh, handles button one click. This is the subroutine that's going to happen when the button one gets pressed. All right. So uh, when this button gets pressed, we're going to have a specific thing happen. And what we're going to do is we are going to, I'm just going to hop back over to my design so you can see where I'm going. Um, we're going to start working with this thing right up here. So this is text box one. I uh, see I've clicked on it. You can see its name right over here. And what text box one is, is our screen of our calculator. And it's also going to be the location where we're going to uh, assemble the numbers that we're going to end up storing into our program. Uh, so what we're going to do, uh, I'm going to hop back over here, uh, is start working with um, uh, the contents of text box one. Uh, actually, pardon me, I'm going to hop back over here just so you can see this. Um, the way we're going to interact with it is we send instructions to uh, we can send instructions to any named object on our um, on our um, design board here. In this case, we're going to be working with text box one, and in particular, we're going to interact with a particular field in here. Uh, so these are all the things we can change about text box one. So these are called properties. Uh, and in particular, we're going to work with the text property, which is pretty much all you really use a text box for. It's its main purpose. Everything else in here is just kind of controlling size and font and things like that. But for right now, we're pretty much just going to be working with text. Uh, and what we're going to do in button one, you can double click on button one to take us back there again, is we are going to uh, write in a particular line of code. And what this, uh, I'm going to type in the line of code and then I'm going to explain to you what it does. So what I'm going to write is text box one dot text equals text box one dot text plus uh, a double quote and the number one. I wish I should get a comment this so it's really clear. Button number one. All right, so what this piece of code does, uh, and it's just like how we talked with the with the variables, is it ends up storing information in our uh, in our program, and but instead of saving it to uh, uh, 
to a variable like we talked about up here. We are saving it into a particular object in our uh, design. So we're going to save it in text box one. Uh, and in particular, we're going to save it in a text box one dot text. And whenever you do an assignment operation like this, whether it has the equal sign, uh, everything on the right is going to get stored in uh, into wherever wherever is named on the left. In this case, we're going to take whatever happens to be in text box one already, and this could be nothing or it could be a whole sequence of numbers, and then we're going to add the number one to the right hand side of it. That's what this plus and uh, the quoted one does. So um, that's going to take whatever is in the text box already, adds a one to the right hand side, and then saves that whole thing in the text box. So what I'm going to do right after this is I'm going to go uh, uh, run our program and actually press one of the button, uh, press number one, and you're going to see what's going to happen. Now, the first time I'm going to press it, text box one is not going to have anything inside of it. But when I press this button, it's going to basically take that empty text box, add a one to the right hand side of it, and then save the whole contents into the text box, the text box one dot text. When I press the number one again, this like for the, this is me pressing the button for the second time, this is already going to have a one in it from the first time that I pressed it. So now I'm going to have whatever that one, I'm going to add another one to the right hand side of it, and then I'm going to store the whole contents back into text box one dot text. So now text box one is going to have one one in it. Okay, so what a good idea is once you get the other number buttons uh, kind of filled out, start pressing buttons and you'll actually see how this works. Um, oh, by the way, if you're ever going to run your program, you just go up here and hit this green arrow here. And we'll think for a second. And here's our working program. Uh, now, everything on here is not really going to do too much, but if I press 1, you can see we can start to appear once. But if I try pressing number 2, because we haven't coded it, nothing's obviously going to happen. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to close this off. Oh, by the way, if you ever have find your, that your program, you can't seem to change your program at all, go up here and look at this. If you see this this blue, it's normally blue when it's when you can actually press it. There's a blue little stop sign, uh, like square stop sign here. Uh, just press that one and it will cancel out your program. It just means your program is running in the background uh, and uh, it won't let you modify your program while that's happening. All right, so, so that's how you create um, your first uh, your first button, okay? And this will work for uh, any of the other buttons in here. So I'm just going to jump over here, and I'm going to open up button number two. So there's button number two right here. And I can pretty much just copy and paste. Except I'm going to update this and say this is button number two, and I'm going to say text box one dot text plus two. So if I do that, now my program will continue running, except now I can do two buttons. All right, so uh, that's you're going to do that. So you can uh, from here on, you're you're going to do that for the three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero buttons. Those ones are all going to be the same. Okay, so you can just copy and paste that code between those ones. Now we're going to talk about these two. Okay, now these ones are going to be just slightly different. So we're going to start off with the decimal button. So I'm going to double click on that one. It's going to take me in here. So to start off with, I am actually going to use, and for both of these buttons, we're going to pretty much use most of the code we did last time. So I'm going to just paste another copy of that one in, just like I did for buttons one and two. Uh, I'm going to change that out to decimal. I'm going to change that to decimal. Um, and there we go. So that's going to add a decimal to the right hand side of our text box when we type it. Um, but there's one, but we do have to do something slightly different here. And that is turn off the decimal button after it's used once. The reason why we're doing this is that we don't want to have someone go ahead and enter five point 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 five. That's going to cause us some issues. Uh, so instead, we're just going to let this button be used once. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to turn it off right afterwards. Now, turning off a button is just like what we're doing when we're modifying the text, uh, except we're going to send a command to this button instead. Now, if we go over here, we can see button number 11. I've got it 
clicked on right here and here's all its properties there is another area in here called enabled and this set indicates whether it, this this um, can be uh, this button can be used or not and it will only ever have two values it'll either be true in which case you can use the button or false in which case you can't and it's going to be grayed out so what we're going to do is in our program we only want to let them use it once now when the program first starts up that that this button is already going to be active and ready to go uh, but when we get when we have when it's finally used and someone presses the decimal button we want to turn that off so we are going to write button 11 dot enabled equals and we're going to store in as you can see the tooltips are already saying do you want to say true or false to this one because that's the two options for this one we're going to say false okay so there we go uh, let's go and try out our program and we'll see how that works so we've got one and two already running so you can type in that word but now when I hit the decimal button you'll notice it does have a decimal in there and I can keep typing oh sorry of course those ones aren't going to work we haven't coded those ones yet but ones and twos will certainly work sorry just kind of instinct for me to push down there and you'll notice that our decimal button has been grayed out I can no longer add any additional decimals that's going to limit us to one decimal per number all the time it's going to and uh, prevent us from having any problem in, in that regard okay so that's how the decimal button works we've got one last button we're going to we're going to work on in this particular one uh, we're going to go back into our design and we're going to go into the negative button so here we are for our negative button uh, just like last time i'm going to deposit a copy of the number button stuff into there except i'm going to change this to negative sign and we're going to change this one now if you've ever looked at a calculator you'll notice that when our numbers are first when, our, when you're entering numbers uh, your negative sign is always going to appear on the left side uh, you're never going to see your negatives number on your right side so you'll always see it in this position right here now when we start entering things in our calculator this means we want to add something to the left side not the right side like we have been um, uh, so that's what so when we're going to be basically modifying the order of this command right here and instead of having text box one dot text equal text box one dot text plus whatever our sign is I better change that to negative uh, I forgot to do that earlier uh, we are actually going to have we're, we're going to instead have this and then we're going to add this so this is going to cause it uh, it's going to say okay I'm going to create I'm going to take a negative sign and then I'm going to add to the right hand side of it whatever's in text box one. So let's go take care of that. I'm just going to drag that across there and just move like that. All right, so take whatever. Uh, so we're going to store into text box one dot text uh, a negative sign with whatever the previous contents of text box one dot text on the right hand side of it um, in order to make our negative number now once again just like we did with the uh with the, with the decimal number we don't want people going negative 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 3.52 it's just going to cause more confusion uh so what we're going to do is we're going to disable this button just like we did up here as once we're done so i'm just going to go down to this next line here and i'm going to write in button in this case i'm going to do button 10 dot enable equals false Okay, let me get rid of this because we don't need this anymore. All right, so there we have there we have it. So we've got our two special buttons that we had to worry about, which are our negative button and our decimal button, and we've got the code set up for all of the other buttons. So what you're going to need to do is, at this point is go through and uh, populate all of the other buttons with uh, with this code which is right here and then update it appropriately for each of your other buttons so that's three four five six seven eight nine and zero for these two buttons we've got special code which you can see right here which we're going to uh, uh, basically add on a, a decimal just like normal but then we're going to turn off the decimal button to prevent people from putting multiple decimals in and then we're going to do the negative button where we're going to have the negative on the left hand side instead of the right hand side like we see with the decimals and that way it'll, it'll appear on the left hand side of our screen once it works and now we can go take a look at it oh, uh, I only have ones and twos you see I keep doing that 
So I'm going to say decimal. I've lost the ability to use decimals. Uh, still haven't learned my lesson. <laughs> and if I hit negative sign, you can see our negative sign appears on the, le on the left hand side and we can't click negative anymore, but we can still keep adding numbers. All right. And that concludes everything for this particular tutorial. So just remember, you got to keep copy and pasting those to all those other number buttons. All right. I will see you in the next tutorial and we'll go from there.